Good day, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Ridgeback Rumble Talk. And we are joined by the women's curling varsity athlete, Morgan Tyfair. Morgan, how are you doing? I'm great. How are you? I'm fantastic. Thank you for asking. What's your day been today? Pretty relaxing, not overly exciting today. Kind of a chill day so far. Yeah. One of those ones. Just kind of when you get into the motions of school, it tends to get like that, right? Yeah, like midterms and stuff right now, kind of just all coming on this week. So that's what I've been doing pretty much all week. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Of course, I wish you all the best with that, for your midterms especially. And <laughs> if you don't know Morgan, Morgan, of course, like I said, is in the women's curling team of varsity athlete, of course from Brighton, Ontario, and going into a fourth year studying criminology and justice studies, and has gotten a lot of awards. She was actually the MVP this past season. Congratulations again. And I saw you yeah. won an academic award in 2019 too. So I guess you're a pretty intelligent person too. Good for you. <laughs> I don't think so, but I don't know. No, you don't have to be modest, it's fine. But um, <laughs> too. you also told me a fun fact that you actually named your dog after a famous curling tournament. You want to talk about that for a little bit? Yeah, sure. So uh, we actually have two dogs. Um, and like just a couple months ago, we got a puppy and our family was like pretty torn between names. But we knew we wanted to start with a B because our older dog is named Baxter. So we just wanted to keep the whole B thing. And both me and my sister curl and my parents watch a lot of curling since we play. So we all just kind of decided to name her after the men's Canadian curling tournament. It's kind of like the biggest uh, curling tournament for men in Canada. It's called the Briar. So we named her Briar after the tournament. Yeah. That's good. I really love either that or Pardon? Women's event is the Scotties, and it just didn't really <laughs> sound the same, so we went with the men's event. Oh, okay, fair enough. And plus, you wanted the B in the name as well, too, like you said. Exactly. Yeah. It just worked out perfectly. Exactly. I really love how it was a whole family decision and how your family is actually really involved in curling as yeah. well. Yeah. Either they're, they're watching us play or watching it on TV during the winter. Obviously, not a whole bunch this year, but usually that's what we do. <laughs> Lots of support from there. That's great. All right. Yeah. So speaking of that, actually, let, I want to jump into talking, first of all, about your Ridgeback squad, the women's curling team. So beforehand, I know, of course, there hasn't gotten to be as much competition this school year altogether. Right. But previously before, though, what can you say about the people you played with? Did you know any of them beforehand? Or did you just meet them? Um, the team? I mean, there's it's pretty easy to get to know people really well on a curling team because there's only four or five of you on the ice together all the time. So it's kind of like you go away for a tournament or like OUAs and you all stay in the same room, like hotel room, because there's only a couple of you. Um, I didn't actually know any of the girls until we started playing together. Um, my vice on the team, Kylie, we've gotten really close. And actually Hannah, I did kind of know her from curling outside of school. We never really like were introduced to each other, but we just saw each other at a lot of events. So we were like aware of who each other were. But other than that, it was just kind of like a blank start for me in first year. Yeah. And I mean, that's fine too. You seem like the type of person who definitely loves to meet new people, especially through sport, because I did took a bit of a head start. I went ahead to read your my rich backstory. And I saw that initially you actually started playing curling because someone invited you to come play so you can meet someone. <laughs> Just tell us about that as well. Yeah, so when like my family moved to Brighton just from like another small town outside of Brighton, but I was like just a kid and I went to a new school so I didn't know anybody. And then the first girl that I became friends with, I was just kind of trying to meet new people and she said hey this weekend I'm trying curling you should come with me a lot of the like the kids are the same age as us you can meet some people so then I went 
and I really liked it. She actually ended up quitting like the next week and didn't stick with it, but I stuck with it. So that's kind of how I got started with it. Good job to you. I mean, for sticking through the whole thing and I mean, <laughs> it's like you really enjoy it now. But yeah, one thing I could really pick out was the fact that you always like to try things for one and you've actually done other sports as well too in the past. So if curling wasn't the sport you were doing now, what sport would you gravitate towards? Um, I pretty much like as a kid, I pretty much tried everything between uh, me and all my brothers and sisters. We probably did every sport that you could in this area. Um, I think if I wasn't curling, I would probably be playing more competitive soccer or like softball or something like that. Yeah. Um, those are the two that I play mostly outside of curling. Okay. So probably one of those two. Fair enough. Fair enough. I mean, we're the backs women's soccer team. would definitely love to have you too. If, of course, you weren't in curling, but curling <laughs> definitely <laughs> you too for sure. Because, I mean, you're pretty good. I don't know if I make the cut. <laughs> That's okay. They're pretty strong teams. But I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it. That's true. They're actually a pretty good team. So coming into yeah. curling at Ontario Tech specifically, what was that journey like for you in terms of your decision making? And have you enjoyed or, of course, I'm not going to ask you, did you regret that decision? Of course, you did not regret the decision. <laughs> but how much has it really paid off for you all these times that you played curling in Ontario Tech? Um, I think like I mostly, obviously I chose Ontario Tech for more academic reasons and like location for me, but in comparison to other universities, Ontario Tech um, has the most benefits for varsity curlers in comparison for say a lot of other universities don't recognize curling as a varsity sport. It's listed as um a club or like a competitive club or something. So they don't get funding from the school and everything's um, paid through fundraisers or just personal accounts. And I think that that was a really big factor for me for picking varsity curling at Ontario Tech because they really supported the curling, varsity curling and like included it and in everything just like every other sport, which is amazing to me that we get, you know, all the, same packages of the other athletes and like the same funding and just so I think that was really amazing because I know I have a lot of friends at other schools obviously who curl and they are like amazed by what the school does for all athletes in comparison to just the bigger teams you know like soccer or like hockey or something like that that's good honestly that's that's really solid of course, I always knew kind of in a way that they did support like all the sports across the board, but I'm pretty happy to see that we actually do pouring a whole lot into a lot of the other sports that I guess people don't appreciate as much, but it's still as fantastic too. Yeah. So definitely, that's good to know. So looking, moving yeah. forward actually, of course, the season couldn't really happen as much this year, and it is, I'm guessing this is your final year too. So yeah. What has that been like? What have you guys been working on? What have you been doing during this period? I mean, it really sucks for curling because um, you still can't train. Like I know a lot of the other sports, even though they can't play in like events or like tournaments and stuff like that, or have even just exhibition games, they still have their facilities that they can practice on or like train all of the club, the curling clubs or country clubs in Oshawa are completely closed for the season. So even if we wanted to, as a team, get together and just practice and train, there's nowhere that we can do that. Mm. So it basically our whole season was just completely eliminated. I haven't really even had a whole lot of contact with like coaches or anything, just because we know that it's, nothing's going to happen with it, which sucks. But at least in Brighton, like where I'm living now there's a cur couple curling clubs open so i can play like a couple nights a week just in a league just to be able to get on the ice yeah. <laughs> true that, true that. it's good to always get the experience going i know for sure that it's annoying that you can't really do that with the team as well but yeah uh, get the adrenaline pumping you know i'm sure you enjoy this yeah. so 
the last thing you want is just to be completely cut off from it for how many months? Who knows? Exactly. It sucks that it had to happen in my last year, though, but oh well. <laughs> I know bad timing too. So just to, just to kind of tie up with this whole topic of curling and ridgebacks and working on, or even just in general, from your experience, or let's say for someone like me who has just seen a little bit here and there, I think I actually watched a documentary once that talked about curling, but I'm not too knowledgeable in the sport as a whole. What would you say is your most the most interesting part for you, and probably the least interesting part of curling? Um. I think the most interesting part is the size of the team, which sounds strange, but um, having such a small team and the roles on a curling team are so intertwined. Like you really heavily rely on every single person on that team to do their part because without one person, the whole game could just fall apart. So I think that's the most interesting part for me is just being able to really get kind of like, close with the people on your team like it's just a very personal sport and it's a very social sport too mm. a lot of the people who just start even just like as adults like mid <laughs> mid 40s kind of thing just to play for something to do just because it's a really social sport so i think that's the most interesting even if you're not good at it like nobody's gonna care it's just a good like it's really, really good to meet people so I think that that's probably what I like about the most. What I probably don't like about it the most is it's pretty slow. <laughs> <laughs> I know that that's why a lot of people can't like have a hard time watching it. If you don't really, really know the strategy and the rules behind every move, it's really boring to watch. Um, like, personally, I can't watch golf because I don't really understand golf. I don't get the skill that it takes. But I think curling's the same. Like, if you really don't understand, it's really slow paced to watch. Or, like, for my friends who don't understand curling to come and, like, watch me play, I can probably understand that it's brutal. Like, it's just, like, so hard to watch if you don't understand. Yeah, I see what you mean. I, I like the analogy you gave of golf. That I guess it's just one of those sports that if you know, you know. But if you don't... Yeah. It's very difficult to track. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Thank you for the orientation. All right. <laughs> <laughs> now off, off that topic though, we want to learn more about you as a person now, Morgan. Of course, that's the whole concept and point of this show in the first place. But before I start asking just some general questions that I prepared, I wanted to tell you, I just wanted to ask you some quick fire questions, just quick answers to kind of get your brain warmed up so you can transition okay. away from that state. So. If you could eat one thing and one thing only for the rest of your life, what would that be? Oh, it would be those. I don't know if you know what those Yorkshire puddings are that you usually eat with like a roast beef meal. Wait, have I had that before? I'm trying to remember. Just describe it, please. They're just like a weird, they're like circular and they're like kind of like a muffin bread type thing, but they're hollow. Like they're just air filled. And you put like gravy on them and you eat it with roast beef and oh my gosh, I could eat those. Like I, my mom makes like 20 of them because I'll eat 10 without even like I would just make them for breakfast. They're so good. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. You, you, you want to try that thing so bad. How <laughs> yeah. you the flavor all together? It's, they're, they're pretty salty, but they're so good. They're so good. I oh. love those. That would definitely be it. <laughs> I've noted that down. All right. I want to try out another <laughs> thing with you too. And just say the first thing that comes to your mind when I say these words. Okay. Okay. So when I say ice. Rock. Rock. Okay. Rain. Red. Red? Why yeah, like the red Oh, okay, okay, okay. I, I was confused at first. <laughs> but was, school. Books. Books, yes. Sand. Feet. Feet, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Plants. Water. Water, okay. And the last one, team. Sport. Sport. Great, great, great. Very good match, though. 
I was hoping he could <laughs> throw in like some very bizarre answers. I've seen some people throw in like some really weird answers. And he just <laughs> Now, I wanted to ask you this question, and this was kind of something that someone just threw at me. So let's say I wanted to come meet you for advice, and I want to make a post on Instagram tomorrow, and I needed a caption. What song would you recommend I should caption my photo after? <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of what I do. Like, I caption all my photos with songs just because... I'm so bad at making captions. I'm not overly active on Instagram, but um, I think the song, oh my gosh, I can't think of who it is. How do you choose, since this is about you, how do you choose what song you use? Usually when I'm, like if I post and I'm picking a song, it's just like the one that I'm listening to the most at that time. Like right now, I'm listening to the song um, Kill Be Girl by the Backseat Lovers. I've been listening to that on like repeat. So I think if somebody asked me, that's what I would tell them. Just straight up the bat. So yeah. what does it take for a song to earn, let me just say your replay value for you to keep on listening over and over and over again? What are your favorite kinds of songs? Um, I don't really, like I like music that's like, very calm like you don't want to say calming but like I don't really like like really upbeat music if that if a song I'm gonna replay it over and over again it needs to like chill me out like, <laughs> kind of like I don't know if you know who Mac DeMarco is I've heard that I've heard that name a lot of times before yeah. or like City and Color something like that just like pretty chill music that's I could listen to like stuff like that like on repeat all day oh my god but so is that <laughs> you you like to that's your your perfect kind of state to be in. You don't really like yeah. a lot of noise, a lot of hustle and bustle. You just like when things are peaceful in general. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, that's good. That's good altogether. So on that note, actually, what would your favorite vacation spot be like then? Would it be somewhere that's just calm and serene or somewhere really busy and where the party is going on every single day? What's your ideal kind of scenario? Um, I don't really like visiting cities. Okay. I don't even really like driving through Toronto. Like, it just stresses me out. <laughs> but if I'm going on vacation, I want to go somewhere warm, obviously. Like, I can just sit on the beach and relax during the day. But, like, mm -hmm. at night, I want to have the option to be able to, like, go out and party. Mm -hmm. Like, it's like a resort or something like that where there is stuff going on at night, but during the day, it's pretty quiet. Okay. I see exactly what you mean. Yeah. Just the kind of environment that has a good nightlife altogether. But yes, yeah, feel during that time. That's great. So altogether, though, there's another question I wanted to ask too. Away from the topic of vacations, I just kind of built up on when you spoke about your music taste and whatnot. There's this thing I always tell people is just that I heard this through the grapevine. It's just essentially when I just tell something that I guess a lot of people may not know altogether, but I found out that you used to play in Team Ontario before. So yeah. what was that like altogether? Um, so I, it's kind of a little bit different in curling than it is, I want to say maybe in other sports. Like we have to be Team Ontario for a, like just one event you have to play um, like your zone, a regional and a provincial. And then if you win that provincial, then you get to go to the national. Mm -hmm. So you probably play about 50 teams before you can even go to the national as Team Ontario. Wow. So when I was in, I think my last year, right before I came to Ontario Tech that year, um, outside of school curling, obviously, my team went to, we went to New Brunswick and represented Ontario at the, it was like, actually it was pretty cool because it was the first ever, like the inaugural um, under 18 Canadian championships. It was the first one that they ever held for this age group. Yeah. So that was pretty cool because I got to be the first ever like 18 year old to represent Ontario, which was pretty exciting. <laughs> so. And the girls that I was playing with, like, we're still really, really close. We don't play together this year, but we played together for, like, I want, like, eight years. So it was a really cool experience, for sure. 
of course of course that's that's awesome were you like a popular person in school saying oh morgan <laughs> ontario kind of thing what was it like it was actually my the school the high school that i went to was actually super super supportive and it was really nice like when we were playing in new brunswick the games were live streamed and the school would like have the games on live and like the library and like my coaches from my high school curling team would like put them on in their classrooms and it was really nice like to get a lot of support from like other like classmates and like my teachers and stuff like that that's pretty cool that's a very wholesome environment for sure yeah it was definitely so on the topic of support let's let's jump to the end and talk more about family first and like how they've supported you i know you spoke about how your family is really into curling as well i guess you could maybe even talk about that too but before we get into that there's this little game that i also wanted to play too i always tend to play a lot of games and all of these things <laughs> for no reason but essentially you probably played this before it's just put a finger down essentially if you've done this or if you've done that. So you just put up okay. 10 fingers and then. So let me see what questions should I throw at you. Put a finger down if you've ever stayed up for 24 hours before. No, I don't think. Never? Impressive. The first person I've seen <laughs> who hasn't done that. <laughs> okay, put a finger down if you've ever been caught talking to yourself out loud. Okay, put a finger down if you've ever mistakenly or purposefully sneezed on someone before. Probably by accident. By accident? <laughs> okay, fair enough. You don't seem like the type of person who would do that on purpose, okay. You seem like no. Great. All right, put a finger down if you've ever missed a flight before. No, my mom's a travel agent. She would lose her mind if I did that. <laughs> That would freak her out. Okay. That's yeah. Nice. Five more questions. Let's see if you can survive. Put a finger down if you've ever frozen during a class presentation. No. Never. So you're Probably not. Person. <laughs> That's good. Put a finger down if you've ever met a celebrity before. Yes. Yeah. Oh, who was it? Um. Dean Brody, he's like a famous country singer. Nice, nice, nice. What was the experience like? Uh, it was really weird. Me and my mom were actually just walking downtown Toronto. I think I was prom dress shopping. <laughs> and some lady like pulled us off the street and was like, hey, do you like Dean Brody? And we're like, yeah, but this is pretty sketchy. So, and she's like, no, no, like come in. So I don't know why we went into this building and Dean Brody was there recording his, I think it was his album, um, Beautiful Beautiful Freak Show. Oh. Anyway, we watched we got to watch him record this whole album, like standing like five feet away from him. And he did all these like interviews with like, um, I think just like different TV shows and stuff like that. So that was really cool. Interesting. That's like a once in a lifetime thing. No, not everyone yeah. has experienced that. Pretty lucky. No. <laughs> Okay, three more questions. Put a finger down if you've ever cheated on a test before. Yeah. <laughs> we all have. We all have. Don't worry. Yeah, all right. Two more questions. Put a finger down if you've ever mistakenly gone into the wrong washroom before. Oh, so many times. So many times. Look at that. Okay. And last one. <laughs> I know you have a dog, or you said you have two dogs, or three. Is it two or three? Two. Two? Okay. two yeah. I've done this before and it was really funny. Not aggressively though, but put a finger down if you've ever barked back at your dog before. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <God. laughs> All the time. All the time. Oh my goodness. All right. Uh, Let's see. So now the dog with the part being part of the family, or the dogs being part of the family, and your bigger family as well, and everyone all together. How how would you describe? Just your family all together what's the energy like the vibe like are they similar to you as a person have they made you as a person just say anything all together no this my family is pretty chaotic oh. i am definitely the most i want to say level-headed one in this house i have two dogs and then i have 
three other siblings. So there's two twins, um, a boy and a girl. And then I have another little brother who's only seven. Mm. So it's a pretty busy house. And I don't know. We like we live in a pretty small town, so there's not a whole bunch of stuff to do. So very like outdoorsy and like like we do a lot of stuff as a family outside, like four wheeling or like snowmobiling and like fishing and stuff like that. Yeah. And I mean, I like to do that stuff, but probably not as much as like the rest of my family, I guess. Like we're pretty different. All, everybody's kind of like a, their own character. It's like, it's just a really busy house. Yeah. yeah that's the only best kind of mix you want to have. It would be pretty boring if everyone was the exact same, right? Yeah, exactly. So who is the best at curling in the house? Would you say it's you or? Oh, okay. 100%. Oh, okay. <laughs> is there potential for anyone else to overtake you? I know you said you have some pretty young siblings too. Yeah, well, my sister is 18. She's actually the only one other than me in the family that curls. But I don't think that there's any catching up at this point. <laughs> hey, hey. Oh, my gosh. She's That's sitting fine. in the kitchen staring at me right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I mean, time will tell. You can always, always train her. Show her your ways. Show her how you've done. Yeah. Oh, yeah Team Ontario, too. How you've done all that fantastic stuff. And whatnot so looking back just reminiscing let's say morgan 10 years ago versus morgan now what advice would you give yourself back then knowing what you know now um i feel like i would just say stop trying to be so cool like you're not all the <laughs> like you know like those girls who would like where they're like Birkenstocks to school in the middle of winter and they were freezing like yeah. that was me and I'm like no I'm like no wear your boots wear your hat like it's freezing outside be practical don't try to be cool like yeah. it's not gonna matter in 10 years so like just do it like just stupid stuff like that like I was I really haven't changed like a ton I don't think like I've pretty much always kind of been relatively the same person like personality wise yeah i think it's just like the silly like things that like teenagers kind of do and now i'm like i did that why did i do that <laughs> it's ridiculous <laughs> you just look at and laugh at that it's, it's just pretty mind-blowing altogether. exactly so I, I was gonna kind of wrap up with that but i want to ask ask one more question too i like to ask this question since you said you've described yourself in a lot of beautiful ways, you know, you said you're a very level-headed person, talented, you're the best at curling in your house, of course, and whatnot. What would you say is one thing about you that a lot of people maybe don't know about you, but you wish more people knew about you? Um, oh my gosh, that's a hard question. Mm, you can take your time, take your time. <laughs> um... I feel like one thing that I don't overly portray, I feel like my head is just like getting so big right now. I'm not gonna be able to fit through the door later. <laughs> um, that I don't like show like my friends or like a lot of different people. I'm actually like a really involved in a lot of charities, mm. which I think is a big part of my life. Like I like to be very charitable and like working with like nonprofits or like Mostly I work with a lot of the humane societies mm. and that's just something that I do like on my own. Like I go by myself and I just feel like that's not something that a lot of people would know about me. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that would be it. Yeah. That's still some, that's something very honorable actually. I wasn't expecting that answer, but yeah. that's your answer nonetheless. Okay. And I feel like if I was going to brag about something, that's what I would brag about. <laughs> Those are bragging rights still about any it. So good for you. <laughs> so just finally to then wrap up the whole thing. I just like to give people the floor at the end. So you can say whatever you want to say. Shout out anybody that maybe we forgot to mention, close friends, anyone. I don't care. Or even your sister <laughs> that you spoke about. That's up to you. Just what's your closing message altogether? 
Oh my gosh. I feel like if I was going to give a shout out to anybody, it would probably just be my varsity curling team. Yeah, that's good. I feel like I'm here like kind of representing my team. So it would be them. Definitely. That, that's the best yeah. answer you could give. For sure. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Morgan. It was pretty fun getting to know the different sides of you as well as the curling team all together. And that's great. And I wish you the very best of success and in post-grad too, for sure. Thanks.